Hi everyone. I've created this video only for mechanical engineers, civil engineers, or anyone who are not in the IT industries and they want to come to IT industry as a software engineer or developer, something like that. So they just decided that uh, they should migrate to software engineer, but they don't know the roadmap and what should they learn and how they can get a quick job. Okay. That being said, I have created a roadmap which will clarify most of your points. Okay. Now, as you are coming into the IT industry or, or wanted to work as a software engineer, just remember two things. I'm repeating, just remember two things. That is one thing is called front end and back end. That's all. Okay. Now you have, uh, you might be wondering over here that, okay, you mentioned front end and back end, but why I can see multiple things over here. Those are the points which you need to know that, okay, those are the rules available in IT industries and you need to understand how those things work all together to build a software. Okay. So now all those points over here are important and you should know that why I'm enforcing that front end and back end only, not other parts. And let's see. Okay. Now let's see with the real time example. For example, we got a client and that client belongs to a e-commerce industry, something like Amazon. Okay. And they wanted to sell their books. And that client was just asking that I want to build a software or like website, something like that. Okay. So as soon as we get that website requirements, hi everyone, I've created this app. We take that requirements and we design that rough designing will be handled by some guys. Okay. That, okay. That website should be having a list of items related to clothes, related to uh, electronics, related to something else. Right. So if you go to any, any website on Amazon and something like that, you will see that list of website. You got my point, right? Now you need to understand how that thing should look before you start implementing or coding into it. Okay. So you design that thing and that thing will be designed in some designing tools such as Figma or Adobe XD. So that comes in the UI UX. Once you design that uh, particular thing, you take that design and go back to the customer and saying that, okay, this is the product we want to build. Are you satisfied with our solution or not? So the customer will come back and say that, okay, we are satisfied and you can proceed by proceed with building it. Okay. The uh, uh, coding and stuff, everything, make that alive like that. So what in that Figma and that uh, all the tools, so you just open Figma. Just remember one thing that is only for designing, whatever it might be. It might be your website, mobile designing and anything. Okay. And you can design your prototypes. Like after clicking one button, for example, I'm clicking this one, right? So it, it will be showing me something else or I'm, I'm clicking this browser, something that is going somewhere else, like, right? So what I was telling you that it will be giving you a prototype. Let me go quickly and show you how that thing will look like. Figma. If I type just Figma prototype. This is nothing but just wireframing, something like that. Okay. Like this one. So after clicking this login button, let me go back here. After clicking this login button, it is going to other page. Okay. So that is the design you design, like in email, password, and everything. Okay. So those are the designing part you, that will be taken care by UI UX. Now you might be wondering that, Hey, might uh, that will be, might be the essential part and why you are just enforcing for the front end and backend only. Yes. I'll tell you why, because as of now, we got lots of tool, which will be giving you the design in minutes. So if you only have knowledge of UI UX of that Figma tool, your job will not be secure at all. So you must need to understand the other stuff that is front end. Okay. Now in the front end, that is a coding stuff, whatever the design you will get. Now you have to code it. Now to code it, you might be wondering that what should I learn and how should I code it? Okay. So to start with all the designs, I would say uh, will be coded in uh, some languages that is HTML, CSS, and bootstrap. This is nothing but just like, uh, you know, design stuff and how you are presenting your text, your images and something like that. That's all. Okay. So those three languages you need to understand and learn. Now do not take any course related to this one. Really, really do not take any course. Just follow W3 schools and you just finish that one. So, you know, just finish this one for in two days, this one, finish this one CSS in two days and bootstrap in three days, something like that. And one week, just finish this up and you are ready. Okay. Do not waste your time if you are starting or if you want to come to the front end. Okay. The next important part that is most, most, most important part. I'm emphasizing it one more time. That is most important part is JavaScript. Okay. Now, whatever the code you are writing in the HTML, the text format, something like that. For example, I'm going to this one and see, I'm clicking this. So this, this, this part, it's related to the just text file. Okay. Just text, but it is, the, it is having behind the scenes, some links, right? So I'm clicking this one. It is giving me other link, right? How those things being performed. So those things being performed with the help of JavaScript. So if I go back to this one, so JavaScript will be handling each and everything like in the backend. Okay. Now you might be wondering that, okay, like after clicking this one or this one, something like that, I'm getting multiple things. What happened was. That was building each and everything. Those things was taking were taking too much time, and some of the guys they sat together and they built some frameworks, which made our life much much easy. And those framework, if you use, we will be having much faster application up and ready for front end. And you might be wondering that what are those frameworks? Those frameworks are nothing but React JS, Next JS, Vue JS. Those are the frameworks. Name some few. Okay, so. In the front end, you just need to know some HTML for how you're presenting the da uh, data and how you are dynamically converting the data. You should know JavaScript and you should know some frameworks, either Java, React.js, Next.js, Vue.js, or Angular, something like that. I'll come back to the GitHub 
later on. Now let's moving forward with the backend. This is the main main important part. Now in the backend stuff, you just need to know one of the main programming languages. Okay, that is your backbone. Okay, either you should go with the Node.js that is built in on the top of JavaScript itself. Okay, either you should go with the Python or Java.net, Ruby, and something like that. Same, we have this JavaScript language. Same over here, we have some different language for the backend. Same, we have frameworks. And same, we have frameworks for the backend as well, okay? For Node.js, we can use Express.js to create APIs. For Python, we have Django, FastAPIs, some other frameworks so that we can create API. Java, we have some Spring Boot framework so we can create APIs and that those APIs will talk to the front end in the JavaScript stuff and in the back end to the database. Now you might be wondering what is APIs? So just remember, APIs are just linked. Like you can call them as links, which are connecting to the front end and database. And that is being handled in the back end. That's all. Nothing fancy in the back end. Okay. But most of the stuff, like, okay, um, if customers come into the picture, uh, where the customers' data should go and uh, how invoices will be generated, all the business logic will be managed in this powerful language in the back end. Okay. So that is the back end thing. Okay. Now, as soon as uh, uh, we are trying to, you know, save that data in the back end, just remember two things. Back end in the system data, I'm talking about database. Just remember two things. There are only two types of database. And as of now, just remember two databases, okay? One is SQL database. Another one is NoSQL database, okay? We will talk, definitely there are a number of databases, but as of now, to keep it simple, just remember two, okay? SQL and NoSQL. Now, in SQL, how those data will be presented? You know, you have gone through, through the Excel file, right? Excel file will be having, for example, I am, I am having the customer data, name, email, uh, phone number, and something like that. I'm, I'll be having one more table called orders that this customer, for example, customer one, having uh, ordered uh, multiple items. So we'll be having one more Excel file saying that all the, co all the columns and rows and uh, each and everything ordered there. So we will be having that table, exactly the same table, which will be giving the relationship between them That is that comes in the SQL database. So that is relational databases. So what are the engines they uh, it has so sql engines they have like mysql's and postgres those are the most most important part and remember guys if you just know this particular one thing that like sql uh one of the uh, engines engines over here like postgres sql or mysql you're gonna get a good job believe me you will, you're gonna get a good job because those things won't get changed and that has lots of demand in future mongodb is like just like objectional or like not objectional objective type databases so it's like not that much uh strict related database but it has some relationship i'll show you later on now Let's have a look like how those tables look like. For example, if I go and show you uh, customer and uh, uh, order, order RDBMS, so something like that. RDBMS is like relationship database management system. So I guess it has typo, but that's totally fine. If I go to images, just want to show you that. Yeah, exactly the same one. So over here, this customer has ID, first name, last name, email. Okay. And that customer is ordering with the like, custom ID will be here and the order amount and the product ID, what products they are uh, ordering, something like that. So those are the relationship. If I go and show you the NoSQL database and it looks like something uh, something like this key value pair, just like object uh, object type. So like, for example, this particular thing has price, has no, not the price. I would say item has price and one item might be having multiple price based on discounts and everything like. So this price will be a child of that item, something like that. Okay, we'll look this one into uh, upcoming videos, but just remember that we just need to follow two things. One is that SQL database and either go with the SQL database or the MongoDB database, that's all. Now, moving forward, if you are going with the SQL database, you should know one of the admins so that you can see that how that data is being saved, retrieved, and um, uh, all the uh, operation are being placed in the database using the admin. So it's like admin is nothing but just showing you the data, how the data will be will look like in the in the uh, database. So uh, let me give you a quick example. Like uh, we have Postgres database. Like so, we will should we should uh, see that the admin how that admin should look like for the Postgres. So there is a Postgres admin called PG admin. If you see that PG admin and that PG admin look, should look like this. So it has all the IDs uh, and the table should look like this one. Remember this one look like the uh, exactly the same like uh, Excel file. That's all. And those are the scenarios. Now, you you, you might be wondering that, I mean, you just told me that SQLs are very, very important, but initially you told that now nah, front end, just focus on the front end and back end. Yes, I'm emphasizing that just focus on the front end and back end. Why? Because as you are working in the back end, you should know the front end as well. Nowadays, people are asking lots of things with the combination, not the single thing, because most of the things are taken care by uh, AI itself. So you should know multiple things altogether to get into the industry. Okay. Now you might be wondering that you missed Amir. What is this ORM? That is object relationship mapping. Okay. For example, we have Python over here and we are writing the Python programming language and we just want to talk to the database, not in SQL language, but in the type of Python language only. So we will get object relationship using Python to talk to the database of SQL, either SQL or MongoDB. Same goes for Java. Java will be having their own ORM, which we can talk to the SQL or NoSQL databases. Same goes for Node.js, like that. So just remember, if you are going into the backend, you should know backend plus the database. 
those stuff you should definitely definitely know and one of the most important part you should know as well in the back end which i'm going to show you in devops what is that that is docker i'll tell you like uh, those uh, how that thing will be linked to the docker okay now let's go to the docker okay now in docker uh, sorry let's go to devops now in devops you might be wondering that uh, i mentioned some some points over here what are those okay now for example i'm building in the back end scenario like all the apis uh, forget about the APIs, all the links which will be connected to the front end backend. But I'm not the only one who is building the APIs, right? My colleague, the other developer, will be working on the same project and we need to work all together so that we can give one software very fast. So we need to, you know, merge, like we need to bring all our code in one platform. We can use GitHub, something like that. That is GitHub in the sense, it's just a repository, uh, uh, one folder, I would say, where we all developers, you know, put our code inside one folder. And that's all. That is a version control. What do you, why, why we call this GitHub as a version control? Because I'm uh, developing one feature today and uh, my one of my developers building another feature and we will be having some update in feature so that we just update that feature as a feature one, feature two. That's why we have version controls in each everything, okay? Now, let's go back to the second part. Uh, that is a uh, CICD. I'll come from here now. Now the thing is that we have set up that's uh, like uh, the backend stuff, all the programming languages, my front end uh, backend developer is working with me and each everything. Now we have to, you know, merge our code, the backend developers and mine to in the one folder each and every time. So instead of, you know, taking my, uh, the other developers code and putting that repetitive work one more time, two times, three times, that should be automated. That is called CI/CD pipeline. That is continuous integration and continuous delivery and deployment. So each and everything will be taken away by CI/CD, And that is the role of DevOps. So whatever you can see over here, that is the role of DevOps, which will be provided to all the guys over here, like front end and backend. Plus database guys as well, but most of the part like front end and backend. Now Docker, guys, most important part today's world is Docker. You should know Docker as, as of now, 100 and 110, 10%, definitely. Okay. Why Docker? Because for example, um, I'm working one of the features today and that is working for, work, working really fine in my PC. That is not a problem, but uh, my another developer is working for uh, one more feature and that is working on his PC. And we might be having different version for Java, Python and something like that. And we were assuming that those feature will work for one version control, like one project, right? It won't happen that much easily. So what we do, uh, for example, I'm doing my code in my PC. I'll take my code and pack it in a container. And that container, uh, that container is nothing but Docker. That's all. So I'll take that container, put my code inside that container and go in somewhere, uh, some other machine and open that container. I run just my code inside that container and it will work. Same goes for my other developer. It will, he will, you know, uh, push his code, her code into the container and run that container into, into, into the another machine. Now, that's, that's how the Docker work. Now, the thing is that that is a scenario for just a couple of developers. What if in future we will be having hundreds of, hundreds of developers working together? We'll be having hundreds of Dockers, right? So how do we manage those things? Those things will be ma managed by orchestration. So we'll be having a number of Dockers, like uh, I'll show you like Docker orchestration like this. If I open this, okay. So we'll be having multiple Dockers like that how those dockers will be managed. Those dockers will be managed by Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is nothing but a, a tool provided by Google, which handle all the Docker services. If something goes wrong, it will you know automatically spin up one more Docker container and then everything will be managed and monitored. Second, um, the other role for the DevOps guy is that, okay, my CI CD pipeline is working fine for front end and back end. That's fine. Okay, Docker, Docker is working fine front end and back end each and everything. Oh, my SQL is not working. Something goes wrong with, the, with my database. No, 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 my API is not working. Okay, my JavaScript, something got failed. From I should know those things, right? From where should I know? That is That should be known by a monitoring tool, something like on AWS, we will be having logs called CloudWatch. So do remember that we should log all the errors which we will be having saying that, okay, what's going wrong and we can quickly rectify it, okay? So those are the scenario for the DevOps. Now you might be wondering that, hey, what are those testers over here? Okay, while building the front end, you need to test it, right? Uh, your code and the functionality. So there are two types of tests. As of now, I'm keeping it really, really simple. Just focus on those points. Let's go back to the front end. Front end, you uh, build code and each everything you, that is working fine. And but you have to understand that those uh, small test cases should run as expected of the front end UI or the requirement uh, taken by the uh, the client, something like that. So you at the time of building the front end, either front end or back end, you just write some unit test cases or the functional test cases. So just like those being handled by the testers. I mean, moving forward, now you might be wondering that there are lots of stuff going on. Uh, so what should I understand? Uh, like from where should I start and something like that? I would recommend that you should start if you are working, uh, if you wanted to go for the front end, you should go with the UI UX plus front end. Okay. And start applying for jobs, directly start applying for jobs. Okay. And do remember guys, I, again, you wanted to have more clarification, start directly, you know, forget about uh, everything. Just go learn uh, the JavaScript. Why? Because if you learn JavaScript, JavaScript comes in the backend as well. That is Node.js. If you learn JavaScript, you do know the concept, you can directly take the advantage of uh, Node.js. And as you know, the Node.js, JavaScript, and the backend, your scope of getting job will be much, much higher. 
So do remember in the front end, complete this section definitely. And JavaScript, that is a, a core JavaScript. I'm, I'm talking about vanilla JavaScript, that is a core one. Once you have better understanding of JavaScript, uh, just learn one of the frameworks that like, like React.js. I'm a fan of React.js, but Next.js is also good. Vue.js is also good. Other other like Angular and something like that. But I prefer React.js. Once you learn React.js, start learning learning uh, Node.js for connecting the backend. And you already have a clear concept of JavaScript. You can understand how you can uh, easily connect and run the Node.js each and everything. Then learn the Express.js, learn one of the ORMs, and definitely either go with the SQL or NoSQL in the backend. And that's all. And this is the flow. If you follow, you will definitely, definitely get a job. Now, in upcoming videos, I'm going to clearly show you that how you can use AI to, you know, quickly create UI UX element each and everything, how you can directly map and uh, build a, a powerful or profound tech stack for the front end as well using AI stuff again. Same goes for the backend technology stuff, backend plus database, something like that. Okay, sorry, I've just forgot to mention that what is the schema designing? Schema is designing is nothing but whatever the requirement designing we are getting like, uh, we will be having customers, orders and each everything, what data tables we will be having in the database that is called the schema designing. So those stuffs we need to manage in the database and that's all. So this is the architecture. And if you uh, have some questions, please do let me know in the comment section below. And uh, this is really, uh, I created these videos for uh, for my uh, for my fellow colleagues uh, who were in mechanical departments, who were in civil departments, or who wanted to come into IT industry. Just follow this one and start applying for the job. You will definitely get a job, whatever I said over here. Okay. And keep watching these videos and please do like, subscribe to my channel. And then in future upcoming videos, you will be having tons of uh, roadmaps and proper understanding from where should you go and what you have to implement. Thanks for watching. See you soon.